Hello, welcome to Flower Juice. My name is John McDonald, and today we're going to have a look at making a floral arch. Now, this is something that you might not be asked to do very often, but it could just be interesting to watch. But if you do have to make one, then we're going to look at how best to approach that. So today, the one that we're going to make is going to be using floral foam. So the, the main benefit with floral foam is it's quite fast. It also allows you to place flowers in a way that is, uh, you can go in any direction. So when you place your flowers, they're basically set the way you want them. So first and foremost, you need to think about your arch. Now what we've got here is we've got a metal framed arch. And this one's good because it's kind of three dimensional. So this is giving it a lot more stability. So if you need to buy one, then do not buy a cheap one because you'll just find it doesn't have the strength to hold the flowers and the greenery that you're gonna use. So we've got our arch, but we've also placed them onto some concrete uh, base. So you need to make sure that it's secure. So whether that's pegged into the ground or onto a base like this, that's really, really important. This is at risk from people bumping into it, but if it's going to be outside or in a courtyard situation where there's likely to be a breeze, then that is a risk to the whole structure. So it needs to be strong and it needs to be secure. Now for the actual uh, mechanic, I'm using these caged uh, containers that you get that are filled with floral foam. These are ideal and actually this is a, a really good way of making an arch. With an arch, you can fill it with flowers or you can set your flowers into key locations, which is what we're going to do here. Um, so we're going to link these with our foliage, but we're going to concentrate our flowers into key areas. And this will really make the flowers stand out. It's also more economical because you're using less flowers and also it's better for the environment because you're using less foam. So what we'll do first is we'll add our foliage and uh, I'll get started with that but then we'll just speed up the video a little bit while I'm um, putting the foliage in because it takes a little bit of time. But normally to make an arch you're definitely going to have to give yourself at least an hour um, to do it. If you're doing it with the foam it is a faster way of doing it but you're going to have to budget on a good hour. So foliage wise, I've got some really nice ivy and one good approach is to think about what you can get your hands on because volume and if you have to buy everything, then it makes it more expensive. So I'm, I'm lucky I've got some really nice ivy on the back of the garage. We're going to use some ivy. I've got some really nice asparagus fern and this is going to give us a really nice romantic sort of a look. Uh, and then I just got some other foliages like eucalyptus, some pitsporum and some ruscus. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is basically place our ivy. So as you can see, we've got really nice, uh, really nice trails with this. And not only are we going to use our foam to support our flowers, but we're also going to use the arch itself. So this will make it more secure, but also um, you don't have to worry about it if it is windy. So this is quite a big bit. Do we want such a big bit? I don't think we want such a big bit. So looking at this, I can cut this in two. And we can come in either side. So what I'm thinking with this design is to make it more symmetrical. So what we do on one side, we're going to do on the other. But we're also going to leave the arch itself uh, slightly exposed so that we can enjoy uh, seeing the detail that's on it. Obviously, if you're going to go for a full arch that's absolutely covered in material, you're going to lose a lot of uh, the details. So if you've got a very beautiful arch, maybe it's worth considering doing it in a more sympathetic way so you still see the structure. It really depends on the situation that you have. So floral arch, ideal for functions. Not necessarily just for weddings, but um, they can be used as an opportunity for people to take photographs. And 
the one thing that's definitely the case with an arch is it's not a very movable item. So once you've made it, it's going nowhere really. Um, so that is something to keep in mind that that is going to be the case. Now, another thing as well is you might want to make an arch that's uh, viewable all round. That will make a difference as well. But today we're going to do one that's front facing. Straight away, that ivy really suits the, the, the metal work. Now, what I've done is I've put some towels down because one thing that is definitely the case with foam is it's going to leak water. And it's just amazing how much water it will leak. So this foliage here, I'm not really sure what it is. Uh, it actually grows at the back of my garden. And I'm not sure, it could be like a, a cherry plum or a, I don't know, but it's really good. So if you can source some of your own materials, obviously that has an advantage for cost, but it also has an advantage on the length of the actual stems. What you'll find with commercial foliage is they can be quite short. Whereas cutting your own, you can cut them to whatever length you want. So let's just speed this up and uh, we'll get the foliage in. Okay, so we've put in our base of foliage. Uh, we've basically used ivy, uh, ruscus, eucalyptus. I've used some nice hosta leaves down the bottom and as I say, some of that garden foliage. So the base, we just want to be careful that you don't see too much. But what I would probably do if I had any, would put some nice flat moss there. Uh, it would look really good. Now it's time that we can add some flowers. And uh, basically we're going with whites. So I've got some beautiful white roses, we've got uh, some standard roses, some spray roses, but I'm also going to add some gypsophila just to help keep with that quite light uh, look, but we're not going to overdo it. So we'll put our gypsophila in first, just because I find it easier to do it in that order. And the great thing with the gypsophila is we can break it down into like little units. As I've said before, Gypsophila has slightly been the, the victim of its own success. It's been so, not overused, but when people use it, they use too much. Uh, and it kind of puts people off, but actually it's still a great flower. It still adds a real element to a design. And if this is for like something that's romantic, like a wedding, then it really helps to, to bring in that feel. So we'll just add our gypsophila. So as you can see with the, the use of the foliage is really giving us a lot of contrast and texture, which is what we wanted. It's a good thing that I'm tall. So I don't really want the gypsophila to be the thing that jumps out at you first. So we're putting it more to the sides, just peeking through, looking from the back. 
and it's just taking a little bit of lightness into the actual design. So like, whereas this greenery could look a little bit dark, that gypsothel is helping to bring that light into there. The other good thing about it is it does add volume and it goes a long way. But even going down quite low here, we can take that light right into the base. And all you need to do with it is just break it down into units and uh, into its own stems. Now, when you're working on a design like this, you want to just keep stepping back and having a look. There's no point in working on just one area and then you find that you've actually ran out of the flowers that you need to do the other side the same. So if you keep moving around, it does seem a little bit erratic, but actually it will give you a better result. One thing to keep in mind is where this is going to be placed. If people are going to be able to walk in from the side, you want to be able to make sure that the sides look good as people walk towards them. So just keep that in mind. But our gypsophila, I think it looks really good. I know some people don't like it, but it's good. And then people also say it smells. Now, it can have a smell when you first get it. And what I would find is if that you get your flowers and you're going to condition them nicely in advance of using them, if you open up the, the wrap, let the air get in amongst it, uh, then the smell will just dissipate uh, overnight. So when you come to use it, it really doesn't have such a strong smell anymore. So, our main flower are going to be these beautiful roses. So because they're nice and big, we'll start with these. And I really want these to stand out. I'm sure straight away you can see that they look good. So, a good way to work now that we're on the flowers is to go one to one side, one to the other. And this is what will give you the symmetry in the design. That will make it look like you've really taken care and planned it. And the reality is it's actually just an easy way to work. And this is where the foam as a base really works uh, for function work, is because you can create flowers to sit in a way that you wouldn't be able to do if they were just into, like, for example, a vase. Uh, they wouldn't be able to go downwards. And you want to take one or two of the roses behind. You don't want to have everything uh, always to the front. And the reason for that is that will take your eye through. So it will make it have much more depth. Now another thing is I put the greenery in, but I didn't stuff it with greenery because what you'll find is as you're adding flowers like this, they've already got 
uh, you know, foliage on them. And as long as that's in good condition, there's no reason why you need to put so much other foliage in because uh, you're actually going to get the benefit of that foliage from uh, the flowers that you're using. So I can see here, I need to come in further back with a rose and on this side as well, further back with a rose. So we've got a nice balanced look. Everywhere has got some nice roses. Uh, it's not a problem. And then I've got some beautiful spray roses. And these are just perfect for going on an arch. This is what I would uh, totally think of as a, a flower on an archway. And these can sit out a little bit from your larger roses. In a way, this is kind of how they would grow. And we're not going to waste any little bits. They're all going to go in. So all these little buds we can put in. Now, you're never going to get the whole thing perfectly symmetrical, so don't lose uh, sleep over it. So if I'm putting in something here, it's going to be very hard to make it identical on the other side. But the fact that you're in the same area, um, if it was totally identical, it would actually look unnatural. Whereas that little bit of variation is what's going to make it look natural and realistic uh, as opposed to contrived. Now, this sort of spray up here. Now, this is definitely an area here where you're going to look up into and um, you want to pay a little bit of attention to making sure that that is not looking bare. And when I step back here, I can see that we really need to put a little bit of something up here and also up into there. I would say use a stool, but I don't have one, so <laughs> I'll just uh, do it from back here. Now, if you've got any little broken heads or heads that uh, you're not going to use in the arch, they're, they're ideal for saving because you might need them for say going on a cake uh, or or you'll be able to use them in some other way so like a, a corsage but every little part of these spray roses we can use now we've got our roses we've got our spray roses i've got some nice um Lysianthus that we're going to put in. And the Lysianthus is a great flower as, well, some people consider it to be like a filler flower, but really, it's really good for splitting down and using. So it's more like a stem flower or a multi-stem flower. And with these double ones, it really brings the colour into the design. So as we're working, the whole arrangement is getting a chance to just drip, which is fine. Another way of uh, saving on drips is if you pre-soak your oasis 
and basically let it drip overnight. Oh, these are not so good. So if you lie it on its back, it's going to hold all that water. But if you put it up on its end, uh, it will drain out a little bit, which will be better. Now, again, just one or two going behind just to take the eye through. And this is also a time when you can just quality check your flowers. So if you are finding that some of the flowers are not looking good, they're broken or they're in poor condition, then this is your opportunity to not use them or to discard them. Yeah, so these are a little bit poor. Uh, so we'll not put them in. I do have one or two more. As long as their stems are in an inch or two, then they're going to have a good source of water. Just as a little highlight and a little contrast, I've got a tiny little bit of uh, this wax flower, and we're just going to add that in. What you'll find is if you use things that have a darker colour, it'll tend to recede. But I think just putting in that little contrast really actually makes the, the other main flowers uh, stand out a little bit. So you could use like a lime green or uh, even a touch of pink or a touch of peach. Whatever your other little colour is, just use it in moderation. But just that little highlight really does, I think, make a good difference. This also adds a little bit of texture as well. So really we're keeping these quite light. And uh, not heavy. So I think what we'll do is we'll have a little tidy up and uh, we'll see where we're at. Sometimes you need to just get to a point where you take away the cloths and you see what's there. And because you really need to step back and just see what you've actually got. So let's do that. Okay, so just stepping back and having a good look, we've removed our towels, which have caught a lot of drips. And what kind of sticks out is these concrete bases. They're not particularly beautiful. As I said, if I had flat moss, I would probably use that for uh, hiding that but we can actually just come in with some more of the fern and use that just to soften that edge yeah so now your eye isn't drawn to there quite as much and we'll just do the same on the other side. I must admit, I really love long asparagus fern. I think it's really useful. Now you could do a lot more of this if you want, but um, I think we've got just a nice, 
quantity for the scale of this actual physical arch. So that's just taking your eye away from the grey of the base support. So I think what we've got here is we've got a really pretty arch. Um, this could be ideal for any sort of function, obviously ideal for a wedding. It's nice, it's open, it's light, it's romantic. All we used was 20 big roses and 20 spray roses and probably about 10 stems of Gypsophila. Uh, greenery wise, we've actually made use of foraging some green and we bought some highlight pieces such as the eucalyptus. So I think this gives a really nice effect and uh, useful for a ceremony, but also for people to take photos as well. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, and you haven't already subscribed, then click here to subscribe. We've got a new video every week, and we'd really love you to join us for a future design. Until then, stay safe and take care.